This is our third and final lecture in the solution series. This one we're going to do strictly the math problems. and We're going to look at what is the math involved in calculating the concentration of a solution and what kind of math can we use to look at how to um, dilute a solution if we want to make a diluted solution from a stock solution. Concentration is a quantitative measurement of how saturated a solution is. So if you were to calculate concentration, it's based on the amount of solute that is dissolved in the specific volume of solvent. For example, here we have two, two different solutions, A and B. They both are made of one liter of, of solvent. However, one has three moles and one has nine moles. So the solution that has only three moles in it is going to be considered to be the dilute solution or less concentrated because it has less moles of solute per volume of solution. Solution B is the more concentrated of the two because it has more moles of solute per volume. So if we wanted to have a quantitative measurement of concentration, one way we can measure that is with something called mass percent. Mass percent you have done before. Mass percent is very much like percent composition. It is percent by mass. So percent is always the part over the total. So in a solution, the part we're concerned about is what is the part of the solution that is made of solute out of the total solution? For example, if we wanted to know the, math, the mass percent of ethanol in a solution that has one gram of ethanol and 100 grams of water, we need to first consider what is the mass of the solute in this problem and what is the mass of the solution. This one's a little tricky because the 100 grams that was given is not the solution, that is the solute or the solvent. So the solution is actually the two of them together, which is 101 grams. We know that the ethanol is the solute because the question says it is dissolved in. So the substance that is dissolved is the solute. Water is the solvent because it says that it is dissolved in water. So to calculate this, we can just take our one gram of solute over the total mass of the solution, and that's going to give us roughly 0.99%. So this is something you have done before when calculating mass percent or percent composition. A more usable form of concentration measurement, which we'll be using in the next few units, is molarity. Molarity is abbreviated as a big M. Um, M actually stands for moles per liters. So if you were to look at a solution that is, for example, uh, 8.5 big M's, you would say that is 8.5 molar. That means that it's 8.5 moles of solute per liter of solution. So molarity is calculated, calculated by taking the moles of solute divided by the total volume of solution, and that volume is in liters. In this example, we want to know the molarity of a solution that is made by dissolving 0.288 moles of sodium hydroxide, that's a base, in enough water to make 1.5 liters of solution. So again, we want to know what is the solute, what is the solution, and then we want to know instead of grams, we want to know the moles and the liters. So we know the solute is NaOH because it, because it is what is dissolving in water. We know the solvent is water, and we actually don't need to know the amount of water because it says enough water to make the amount of solution we need, which is what we wanted anyway, is the liters of solution. So we know our solution is 1.5, so the amount of water doesn't really matter. So we can now plug this into our equation where the molarity is the moles of NaOH over the total liters of solution, which gives us 0.192 moles per liter. Well, you can also write that as 0.192 big M's, which is 0.192 molar. So this is a very easy problem. A more difficult one would require the use of grams and moles, which would require you to convert from grams to moles by using the molar mass. So what if instead of moles, we were given grams of NaOH? So again, we want to look at what is the solute and solvent. Again, the NaOH is our solute, but this time we're given grams. So we need to convert grams to moles. So we're going to use dimensional analysis and the molar mass of sodium hydroxide to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide which we can then plug back into the problem like we did before to calculate the molarity. 
if we want to have a solution that is diluted, um, we have a different math problem that we can use. So dilution is the process of making a less concentrated solution. So an example of dilution is if you have a few drops of food coloring and you add water to it to make a less strong food coloring solution. Or if you have, for example, concentrated orange juice and you add water to it to make it a more dilute solution, which is what would be what you usually drink. So a st you usually take a dilution of a standard solution. A standard solution or a stock solution would be what you keep in stock. And what scientists usually keep in stock is very concentrated solutions because it is less expensive to buy a little bit of a very concentrated solution and then just dilute it at home. So a standard solution is a solution that we know its concentration and then we want to figure out how much water should we add to dilute it to the appropriate molarity. As you can see in the picture, when you dilute a solution, all you're doing is adding extra solvent. So the key here is that the moles of solute remain the same. So in this picture we have one mole of solute and we have it in only 0.3 liters of solution. So we can calculate the molarity is 0 or is 3.3. If we add an additional 0.2 liters of pure solvent, the one mole of solution has not changed, or one mole of solvent has not changed, so we still have the same moles of solvent. What has only changed is our total volume of solution. So because we have the same amount of solute dissolved in more solvent, that affects our molarity. It is now a much less concentrated or diluted solution. So you can calculate what the new molarity of your solution would be by knowing that the moles is constant. So if our formula is that molarity is equal to moles over liters and moles of our initial solution are equal to the moles of our final solution, we can make this equation where molarity of the initial solution times the volume of the initial solution is equal to the molarity times the volume of the final solution. Something to be careful about with the final volume is, is that it is equal to the initial volume plus the volume of whatever amount of solvent is added. So you have to be very careful when you're reading a problem to figure out are you given the amount of extra solvent you're using to dilute it? In which case you would need to add it to the initial volume. However, if you're given the final volume of the final solution, you can just plug that in. So for example, what volume of 16 molar sulfuric acid must be used to make 1.5 liters of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid solution? So this initial highly concentrated solution, this is our standard or our stock solution. And we want to know how much of it do we need to use in order to make this dilute solution that we want to use for whatever purpose we're doing. So as a hint, if you see a problem and you are given two molarities and two volumes, that tells us that this is not just a standard concentration solution, this is a dilution. So we're going to use our M1V1, M2V2. So the initial molarity of our stock solution was given as 16 molar. The initial volume, that's what we're trying to find out. So we want to find that out and we want to know what it is in liters. And we're given our final molarity and our final volume. So this is our final volume because it is not telling us how much we are adding extra. It is telling us what the final volume is. So we can just plug this number in directly. So by putting in these numbers, dividing by both sides by point, uh, 16 so that we end up with x all by itself, we end up with adding basically 0 .0094 liters of the initial solution. So what that means is you're going to have 0 0.0094 liters of your stock solution. And then if we wanted to know how much water is added, you would then subtract at 1.5 minus that 0 0.0094 liters to tell you how much water is added. 
So for practice, I recommend you do these three practice problems. Um, these will help you get a good idea of how much you understand these three different equations that we will be using this week in our quiz. Good luck!